I'm Larissa Vienna, and this is the Mr. Vile Show. specific vision of what I wanted to do. So since I was capable of doing it all myself, I just figured why not. So I just make all of my songs in my room. I made like a 16 track album by myself. And um, then when I started playing live shows, I had so many friends that were musicians that I was just able to ask people to join just for the stage appearance basically and for that full band sound. Then eventually after the next couple years, I really felt like we were a band because I had the same team of people that were so passionate that it just became easy to be like, hey, we should actually do this together. And But I didn't want to be called something else other than Larissa Vienna because that was already kind of established. So I was like, let's be Larissa Vienna and the something. How about Emma Strange? And they were just like, sure, send out a text. How about Larissa Vienna and Strange? And they are just like, yeah. So, I mean, they're so easygoing, it's really easy to work with them. I could have been like, let's be Larissa Vienna and the lesbian vampires from outer space, and they would have been like, cool. I understand you have a few interesting characters in your group, particularly Nick, your lead guitarist. Nick has been my friend for, like, longer than anybody else. I've known him since I was 13, and he is pretty ridiculous in all the best ways. Like, he shows up to practice wearing, like, Betty Boop pajamas. He showed up to my rehearsal dinner before I got married wearing like a Spider-Man outfit. And he'll show up to practice with like, girl go lightly wine. And he's just always up to something interesting. He's a very surprising person and very cool. So he always adds this very interesting flavor to the mix. You released a music video for your song Underwater and it's so far, just over a month, it's reached nearly 54,000 views. Congratulations. Tell me, what does that song mean to you? How does the video represent your original vision? And finally, what about it seems to be connecting so powerfully with your audience? You know, the song and the music video are one and the same. I always have believed that I think the music video and the song should match. I get kind of weirded out when other artists make a music video that's completely unrelated to the content of the song. So I wrote the song, I think in 2013, when I was in the middle of a relapse. And, uh, you know, I've said this before, I just feel like when you're in that sort of darkness and you have bad habits and you go through those kind of things for a long time, you're a more familiar in your darkness. So when you start to get better, a really sick part of you starts missing the really bad sides of yourself and the, those clouds over your head. And that's kind of what I wrote it about. Like it felt like I was drowning, but I was just letting it happen. So that's what the music video is about. And I used a lot of symbolism in it, whereas my main character, she's going through a lot. You know, she has like a, this pill addiction. There's a prostitution scene, all this stuff. And she keeps finding these like red roses randomly, kind of alluding to life being like, hey, I'm, I'm trying to help you, it's okay. But then at the end, she just lights them all on fire. Like, I don't give a shit. I don't care. I don't care about getting better. Like, I didn't want this happy ending to the video. I wanted it to be exactly how I felt when I wrote that song. And um, Cassie, who starred in the video, actually um, was addicted to Xanax. And she's very open about that, so I don't feel bad talking about it. And ever since then, since we shot the video, she's been sober ever since. And I think that um, people resonate with the video and the song because in one way or another, I feel like everyone has felt that way at some point to where you're comfortable without your light. The past, it bores me. 
I want to know about the future. You have a big show coming up with one eye doll and I set to kill. I have also had the pleasure of sharing the stage with one eye doll. Kimberly and Junior are wonderful people. Why don't you tell the viewers about that show and how they can get tickets and do you have anything special planned for the night? Yeah, I mean, this show is going to be awesome because we are debuting some new material that we've been working on. And I absolutely love One Eye Doll because they go all out. Not only do they have good recordings, but they have the most fantastic stage presence you'll ever see. And that's um, something that's very rare nowadays. Lots of bands don't have stage presence. So um, I'm very, very excited to be on this lineup. Um, I love girl bands. I love when girls are in the music scene. So, you know, us, I set to kill One Eye Doll. It's just like the perfect lineup for me in my eyes. So you can actually get tickets on LurisVienna.com on my website and it just goes uh, straight to PayPal and I mail them out to you and then I do promos every now and then where if you buy the tickets online I'll give you like a free shirt at the show. You are about to begin recording your new album soon, correct? Yep. How will this one differ from the Strange Siren EP? And I want to know everything production, songwriting, and when can the viewers get a copy? So Strange Siren was just like the perfect first EP to put out there. I mean, we recorded it at home with my friend Steve and um, I feel like it was kind of rushed. I was just writing all the songs really quickly, teaching them to my band like that week and being like, hey, we're going to the studio Sunday, have it down by then kind of thing. So it was a little bit rushed and honestly, I wish everyone could hear the demos I have of the songs that I made on my laptop because they're just so, it's a whole different feel. It's not as good a quality, but it's a whole different feel, like a lot spookier and a lot more what I had in mind, but I'm still pleased with the project. So what we're doing next, I feel like it's just strange siren on steroids. Like you can tell that we've all gotten better as musicians. The content is way better. We have way more bluesy elements. Vanity is now in the band. She's our violinist and we have a lot of violin driven songs. Um, Aaron, my bassist, he has a lot more bass driven riffs in there and he's very talented at bass and now he gets to show that off and it's so cool. I just feel like it's going to a whole new level and I really think that people will be impressed and I really can't wait. It'll be out this May. We're recording with Rusty Sun Audio and I think he's like the best in town so I can't wait to see what to hear what it sounds like what else does the future hold for Larissa Vienna and the strange provided of course you make it out of this room alive if I make it out of this room I plan world domination a little bit we are going on tour this May through June we're going through the East Coast and um, we have a lot of things in the works that I can't talk about yet, but this is going to be a really big year for us. And I just like feel it in my gut. Like it's very arrogant, but I feel like the universe is on my side and I'm very excited. Your lyrics often touch on difficult, somber subjects such as depression and addiction. And publicly, you are very open about your own struggles. But there is a certain dichotomy there you present a very positive message of recovery as well. Do you feel like you're walking a tightrope between two worlds? Or are those lyrics a look back on darker times from a more positive place? All of my songs I've written while I've been in a sad place because that's how I deal with it. That's how I vent. I'm not like a talker, so I write out what I feel. I sing what I feel, and that helps me get over it. You know, and... I'm very open about what I go through because so many of the kids that come to my shows are very open with me about what they go through and tell me things they've never told anybody. And, you know, a lot of people deal with mental illness, with depression, with anxiety, and there's this huge stigma against it. And people don't really understand it. And then there's this whole wave of people on the internet that glamorize it as if depression makes you poetic or interesting and as if eating disorders make you glamorous and wanted or something and I just I'm so sick of that that I want to expose the truth of mental illness but at the same time I want kids to come to my shows and be like okay you know she has depression she has anxiety but she's up on that stage and she's still following her goals I want these kids to know that you don't have to let that stuff hold you back it can be a part of who you are but it doesn't have to define who you are thank you Larissa for being on my show and being so candid you're welcome Anytime. Am I going to get out of here alive?
teleportation so I couldn't get kidnapped. Still Larissa. I was on American Idol once. Steven Tyler on American Idol. Halloween. Hole. The Lost Boys. Not at all. I hope you enjoyed that, friends and captives. Thank you for watching. Until next time, don't forget, like, subscribe, and check the links in the description for more information on Larissa Vienna and the Strange.